I'm sitting there, I've been told all my life that I couldn't live to grow up. I would die, but I never believed him. But sitting there that day, I knew I would never have to pray to die again. I knew I was dying. I knew that unless God healed me and did it quickly, I could not go on living. So I didn't want to give up and die. I'd come this far. I wanted to trust God and let him heal me. Sitting there, I wondered how I could get the attention of Jesus. I prayed and said, Jesus, remember a long time ago when I almost got to heaven and you wouldn't let me cross the river. You said to go back and suffer a little while longer. You'd heal in the fall. I said, it's still awful hot today, so I don't reckon you really called this fall yet. I wondered how I could get his attention. I begged and coached him to heal me, but I thought as far as I can remember, I've never told the Lord I'd do anything for him if he healed me. So sitting there, I said, Jesus, listen to me. And I'll tell you what I'll do. If you'll heal the organs in my stomach, put them in their proper place so I can eat and digest solid food and gain strength. I'll use all that strength for your service. If you'll heal my heart and give me a brand new strong heart, I'll use that strong heart for you. I said, Jesus, I want to be healed so bad. I'll go further than that. If you heal me on the inside and heal me on the outside and make me perfectly whole. From this day on, my life will no longer belong to Betty Baxter, but I'll be yours. And I'll go where you want me to go. I'll do what you want me to do, and I'll be what you want me to be. That's the promise I made for the healing that I have tonight. Was sitting there trembling, waiting if he would answer me. Or when again I get no answer, went in an audible voice beside the chair. Jesus spoke out of me and said, Betty, I'm going to heal you completely. August the 24th, Sunday afternoon at 3 o'clock. Yes, he sir. gave me the hour. He gave me the day, the time. That isn't strange. God knows all of our tomorrows, doesn't he? The first thought I had was, won't mama be tickled when I tell her? She says, I'll be healed. But what will she say? When I tell her, I know the day and hour he's going to do it. Then Jesus spoke and said, now don't tell this till my time comes. And I thought, how will I ever keep from telling mama? I've never had a secret from her. I tell her everything. That's my favorite but The door part. opened. I heard Mama coming in. And you know, in those days, there wasn't tapes on healing or books on healing like we have today. Mama just read God's Word, and she didn't know a lot about healing, only what the Word says. And then Mama taught me, and the one thing she continually told me, Betty, if we want to receive a miracle, we must be careful never to displease the Lord or disobey Him. So I knew I couldn't disobey by telling Mama I'd have to keep still. So I kept my mouth shut very tight so I wouldn't open it, let it slip and tell her. She came in and sat on the floor and looked at my face. She talked about my family, my little brothers. And then smiling, she said, Honey, do you know when the Lord's going to heal you? In all the years before, when I didn't know, she hadn't asked me. And now when I knew and wasn't supposed to tell, she asked. I couldn't tell her Jesus said not to her, not to. So I just looked at her and said, when? She said, August the 24th, Sunday afternoon at 3 oh, o'clock. Oh. I said, Mama, I how'd you that. know? Did I let it slip and tell you? She said, oh, no. The same God that talks to you, he talks to me, too. So it made me doubly sure. On the 24th day of August at 3 o'clock, he would heal me. I said, Mama, if you really believe it, don't wait, not even till tomorrow. We'll go to town right now and get a new dress and shoes and let's have them all ready when Sunday comes. So when I get healed at three o'clock, I can wear them and go to church on Sunday night. That's what I've been waiting for. She did think tonight of the fantastic faith my mother had. When nobody around us believed, the pastor didn't believe, the church didn't believe. Even my daddy was doubtful he could not believe Jesus still heals today. Mama got dressed, went to town and came home with a dress and a new pair of shoes. That was the greatest day of my life, lying bent over in bed. There was a place at the foot of the bed where I could see, and she put the dress and the shoes beside the dress. And I made no difference how long she left me alone. I was never lonely anymore, because I never got tired of looking at the new dress and shoes, thinking, won't I be pretty when Sunday comes? And Jesus makes me straight, and I put on my new dress and sh shoes, and I'll go to church and be normal just like other if daddy were here, he would tell you that he knew she had suspicion for a long time. Something was wrong with mother and I, and when he saw the dress and shoes, he knew something was wrong with us. Daddy said he actually thought we've at last lost our minds. No one believed. Everyone looked at us strange. 
But I want you to know you can stand on the Word of God. And it makes no difference what man will say if God's Word says it so. Then it's going to come to pass. Because His Word cannot lie. He watches over His Word to perform it. Finally, something came. I was suffering worse than I'd ever suffered in my life.